My name is Anis Rahman. I am a Bengali Swedish poet. I mostly live and work in Sweden, but my authorship also is based in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. And uh, from Literature Center in Uppsala, we run International Mother Language Poetry Cafe with mm -hmm. poets from different countries, different backgrounds, different languages, and different cultures. Mm -hmm. Today, we have a guest. His name is Efrin Gonzalez. He is originally from Guatemala and now is stationed in Denmark. He's an internationally involved poet and uh, initiators of literary festivals in Denmark. He works very much internationally. And he is also a translator and writes poetry definitely. And in the beginning of our program, we will have some questions to him. Then he is welcome to read his poems in Spanish and English. Mm -hmm. My first question is, why and how did you begin to write poetry? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think uh, it happens like 15 years ago when I started doing some philosophy courses in Guatemala. Um, but I think the very core of this question can be answered through my family heritage, uh, especially my grandmother. She was uh, quite a character uh, gave me the mysticism she contained. I think that will answer your question. Okay. Then, next one is, um, how did you end in Denmark? Oh, yes, it happened in 2010. Mm, at that point, I was working in Guatemala in, in the financial industry. Um, then uh, I found love, and love was from Denmark. Uh, we moved together in 2010. It was love and profession at the same time, I would say, uh, basically. Okay. <laughs> then, would you like to tell about the contemporary literary voices in Guatemala? Because we don't learn a lot of, about literature from Guatemala. Neither in Bangladesh nor in Sweden. Yes. Um, well, uh, as in any other country with high level of uh, historical and social conflict, I would say um, the postmodernity is the perfect arena to point out the problems of uh, specific groups in, in, like in Guatemala, raising up the voices. Uh, let's say in indigenous and. In, uh, Black people in the north, uh, women's voice, LGTBI voices. Uh, in general, I think what is considered the, the cultural left took a lot of space, not just in Guatemala, but that's an international issue, right? Or phenomenon. On the other side, I mean, you have the hip hop that talks about the, the, the Maras, which is the gangsters that came in the 90s and they talk about the ghettos. And then you have the evangelical churches that have proposed a big set of music industry from rock to evangelical reggaeton. However, I still think that uh, in Guatemala, the very core of the spirit remains in the consciousness of the scientific civilization that was disappeared, the Mayan people. And that consciousness has to be rolled back and retranslated into the today's matter. And I think that will work, that will move on the society in every sense. And uh, do you speak Danish also? A little bit. Okay, but you write in Spanish. Most of the in, time, yes. And also in English? Yes. Okay. Then uh, what is the status of uh, Spanish language and literature? in Guatemala and also in Americas. When you say the Americas, you mean uh, no, the, the whole continent? Yeah, yeah. North, Central and South America? Yeah. Or, yes, that's what you mean, okay. Uh, well, I think in general, poetry is one of those uh, social artifacts, right? That vibrate into people's minds. You will hear phrases of 
poetry everywhere. I mean, written in walls or political speeches. Uh, and the reason for that is that poetry is, um, poetry clothes the ideas and puts them in a way that people not just understand them, but feel them. In the Americas, the poetry today is as strong as always been, but I think the voices have diversified enough. And uh, in terms of the languages and the preoccupations and the new themes set, technology, for instance, one of those. Yeah. And uh, another thing is, is a personal question to you about your writing. Then mm -hmm. it is not provocative. Uh, we are just curious to know why a reader will read your poetry. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, well, depends where is the reader from, but I think uh, only for the sense of difference. Uh, there are certain topics on my poetry um, that probably do not correspond to the mental map of concepts uh, of that person. And that's because at, at the end I'm from Central America and that has an impact of my world's vision. Uh, that could be something that the reader could uh, appreciate. Since you are also initiator for a number of literary events and festivals in Denmark, mm -hmm. would you like to say what is the role of a festival or literature on stage? Yes. Um, well, Latin Americans in Europe in general are quite uh, well adapted. But when I came to Denmark, I could not find really a, like a literary establishment in Spanish language. So I started to do some work around that and it ended up being this festival, which is a sort of miracle because uh, probably nobody noticed at that point how necessary it was to have such a field in the culture. Uh, this year, apart from COVID, uh, in the quarantine, it's been enormously generous in terms of the recognition of our work. And we will have partnership with the film festival, the music festival, and the cultural festival this year, if everything goes as planned. Uh, the team is extremely professional and effective. Um, I think the main contribution we have had is to link academia with the social society, the civil society which not always happen. And this by giving uh, as well an updated view of the literary world written in Spanish. Very good. Would you like to comment on the difference between literary scenes in Guatemala and in Denmark or in general in Latin America and Europe? Yes, the, the, the themes are different because Denmark is a bit more order country uh, where the social fabric is strong enough, which is not in Guatemala. Guatemala had a big conflict that destroyed completely the social fabric. And that has been a big, huge uh, problem throughout um, the last 30 years to build up a society that works in art is one of the artifacts that try to do that. In Denmark, uh, probably art has not that function, but the, because the functions of the, the economy and politicians are, were established in countries like Scandinavia. But, um, so there are no, there are not the, the same nature of social issues. Well, if you go then to the immigrant the groups, then you will find uh, a reflection of what just said about Guatemala. And that's something we could talk about. That's interesting, actually. And what is your ongoing literary project or writing project? The ongoing project. Um, well, I'm always writing poetry. I, I have a book finished, um, which is going to be called probably Poesia Marina, Marine Poetry, but I'm not sure if about the title, but it's erotic and about love. Uh, yeah, and I'm also writing a novel about um, a person, a guy who tried to survive in the nightmarish Guatemala of the 90s. 
after dealing with drugs and mafias. Um, this novel is a portrait of my generation, uh, the one that saw the emergence of the Maras, these gangsters in the area. This is going to be a long process, but I'm, I'm already doing good stuff there. <laughs> and what is your next writing project? I think now it's uh, coming um, something related to films. Um, I have had some talks to people in regards to building some plots for films, documentaries. Uh, this is new for me, but I'm really looking forward to jump into that new field. It's really getting interesting now for me. Yeah. Very good. And now we'd like to listen to your reading and you are mm. welcome to read both in Swedish, not in Swedish I guess, but in Spanish, English and hopefully in Danish. Oh, <laughs> I don't have uh, anything in Danish prepared, okay. but I can very well do a couple of English translations, um, actually translated by Elizabeth Torres. Mm -hmm. Yes? I just so, this morning. Excuse yeah. me? Yeah, yeah. So, so sh I should we start? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, continue. Okay. Okay, I'm going to read then the first two poems uh, in Spanish okay. that correspond to this book. Yeah. In spite of the downforce, I'll read it in Spanish and then in English. A pesar de los aguaceros, seguimos estando aquí con nuestras sugerencias y las tautologías de los sabios instaladas en nuestro leve espíritu. Las aguas sabias mutantes tangenciales confrontan nuestro tiempo y por ratos toman forma rígida para lloverse a sí mismas e ignorarnos con arrogancia. Inmutables eternos Seguimos estando aquí, sobre todo, acariciando el frío, pensando en los mangos y en el beso de la presión política. Por instantes, mientras nos ven los elementos, somos la cáscara de cada gota que cae derramada en llanto y desaparece al tocar el pino. A pesar de las gotas categóricas, seguimos estando aquí, en forma de lógica, sin lugar a dudas, ya sin premisas. And now in English, the same poem. Yeah. In spite of the downpours, we continue being here with our suggestions and the tautologies of the wise, the wise installed in our mild spirit. The waters, sage, tangential mutants, confront our time and in brief moments take rigid form to rein themselves and ignore us with arrogance. Immutably eternal, we continue being here over everything, caressing the cold, thinking about the mangoes and the keys of the politic pressure. At times, while the elements see us, we are the skin of each drop which falls, spill in sobs, and disappears when touching the end. In spite of the categorical tears, we continue being here in logical form, without a doubt, now without premises. Okay, and one thing is, do you write in English and Spanish and also translate? But how do you publish your books from Guatemala or in Europe? Well, I decided to go for the self-publishing uh, uh, because that gives me flexibility to, to share my work. I have some printed copies here in Denmark, but I can also have the digital form. Yes, um, at least for now. And uh, is the publishing sector growing in Denmark and or in Guatemala? Uh, well, I think in, in Guatemala, as in whole Latin America, this uh, 
self uh, or independent publishing houses called cartoneras, like carton made of a uh, type of book, it became really famous. And that's also why we, the reason why we talked before, um, people had to release the poetry and they found uh, cheap material to release. I think in Denmark is more official way of publishing. There are funds and so on to, to make it must be more organized. Yeah. Yeah. Next one, poetry. Next poetry. Yes, yes. from the same book, um, Autorretrato Arqueológico. Mi torso, glifo de piedra con símbolos exactos que datan el día preciso en que fue tallado. Mis manos, memoria de todo lo computado, del espacio corpóreo y las imágenes de tu voz. Mis caderas, testigas de que la serpiente emplumada aún vive. Este cuerpo, instrumento sujeto a la arqueología que tu observación y tu tacto le imponen. En inglés. Archaeological self-portrait. My torso, stone sculpture with exact symbols, which date the precise day in which I was carved. My hands, archive of all that is computed. The corporal space and images of your voice. My hips, witnesses who can attest that the winged snake lies, bleeds. This body, instrument subject to the archaeology imposed by your tact and observation. Next yes, uh, next one, uh, I'm going to read a short one from a book I'm preparing that is called Totem, uh, and it's about uh, paternity. It's a very short one. Uh, Tú, espejo mío, rostro bivalente, tú, símbolo mestizo, ríes y yo lloro por tu alegría, tu entrega sagrada, mírame, yo soy tu padre. I could try to translate on the fly, if you want. <laughs> Would you like that in English? Yeah. Okay. You, my mirror, bivalent face. You, mixed symbol. You, you, you laugh and I cry because of your joy. You, sacred deliver, delivery. See me, look at me. I am your father. Mm -hmm. well. Would you like to tell more about your ongoing novel you are writing? My novel? Yeah. Yes. Uh, the, the title by now is called uh, Poison. And the reason for the title is because the guys of these groups, uh, the gangster groups, they used to have nicknames in English. And they have to sound very scary. And this guy, who was uh, about 18 years old at this point, he chose Poison as his nickname, and he was uh, a serious killer. Um, I mean, it's the story of a real person that is fictionized within the Guatemalans of the 90s, but there are a lot of real components on this. And the deal is about, uh, there are certain mafias around, that are collecting and protecting some documents related to um, mafias that incriminate people from different countries, the United States, Guatemala as well. Uh, and it's, it's about that, basically. Some documents that contain uh, relevant information that could uh, put down important people. And the poison is, is key in this story. How 
Excuse me. How much do you know about Bengali writing and Bengali poetry? Ah, you will teach me actually. No. Bengali. I'm just curious to, to find the angle between the two distant continents. Mm -hmm. Latin mm -hmm. America and Asia. Yeah, I, I think that region, uh, it's more famous for uh, the films. But um, I think in terms of poetry from Asia, I'm, uh, I am still building my knowledge. So, yeah. Say it again. Say it again. Rovindranath Tagore. Oh, no, I don't think so. Okay. But uh, please, please uh, uh, give it I to me. I got the Nobel Prize in 1913 as the first non-European writer. And not only as the writer, he was also the entire history of Nobel. He was the first mm -hmm. one who was non-European talent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, He's a Bengali poet. He's my. He's from my country. And he is available in all possible modern. And language. what are what are his main uh, themes? Uh, he was. Uh, uh, he got the Nobel Prize for lyric poetry. Basically, he was a philosopher, educator, novelist, mm. and uh, novelist, playwright, short story writer. He. He wrote all sorts of writing except epic, mm -hmm. and uh, he has a huge volume of writings. Even sixty-two of his books are translated into only Swedish. Mm -hmm. He has translated uh, almost all possible modern languages. Mm -hmm. so, you, you can Google on him. Would you mind to send me the name? Or... I'll send you the main name and link. And names also, uh, you know, in Asia and Latin America are quite different. Yes. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> the sounds also. Would you like to read something more? Uh, absolutely. How long time do we have? Um... Uh, we usually run around half an hour. It can be some minutes less or more, but we also edit it. Mm. Just don't publish it as it is. Mm. <coughs> yes, I have uh, three more texts um, without any translation, but... Um, I read them in Spanish because it is an international programs that the Spanish readers can listen to you. Si. Welcome. Okay. Um, I'm going to read a, a poem uh, from Poesia Marina, the book of poetry that I am almost finished with. And it's called Oleajes de Sexo y Dios, which could be sex and God wavings. De las extensas mareas celestiales de un individuo cualquiera se ha desprendido un corazón como un destello de luz, vivo de rojura, bravo como una lanza. Ha transitado galaxias llegando a la superficie terrícola en forma de viento huracanado, de conjunto rugiente de partículas de aire de colisión ante la realidad líquida. Ha impactado unas arenas movedizas llamadas amor, enterrándose como lagartija en la arena, ex excavando a fondo para perderse en tan gran infinitud granulada, componente perfecto de un reloj sin tiempo, dueño de todas las eternidades de los hombres. Inserto en el fondo de la tierra desierta, el corazón tocó el centro de la vida, óvulo del fuego más candente, metáfora del sexo y de Dios, y se entregó al suicidio de su especie por el placer de morir en tan dulce calor, en el kilómetro cero de un astro de maremotos y auroras boreales, 
rojura muerta en azul perfecto. Nunca tuvo voz el corazón. La palabra no fue una opción. Siempre fue forma, fue destello y tiempo. Fue gravedad y vértigo. Fue aire y amor, vaguedad y reptil. Centro e inicio, lanza y fin. Adiós, gran corazón. Hasta luego, gran tótem. Cuando llegues al Olimpo de lo puro, vístete de seda y corónate de sonrisas, que tu trabajo ha terminado. Ahora descansa. Next one. Next one. One more. <laughs> Let me tell something else before you begin. Uh, I met also the other poet from Guatemala who lives in Uppsala. Mm -hmm. And his name is Abdel Fuzar Zoa. And he is published in Swedish and uh, Spanish. And mm -hmm. might be in some other languages. And he was also a friend to Thomas Tranströmer, the Swedish uh -huh. poet who got Nobel Prize last year, 2011. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See. So I talked to him. I'm going to meet the another one poet from Guatemala. Anyway, uh, you might have a chance to meet each other sometime. Um, anyway, yes, for reading next one. Oh, let me see how much do I have left. Um, yeah, I have two more. I can give you this one. Uh, Navegar un beso. Me encontró devastado a la par de la sombra de un monstruo gigante sobre mis hombros. Mis huesos habían sido triturados por el abrazo de una tristeza enorme. Con unos ojos negros y tiernos, aceptó mi invitación a navegar un baile, quizá con miedo a lo inevitable, quizá con plena intención de no evitar un beso. En su cuerpo fluido y compacto derramé miel, su agua se endulzó de la mezcolanza química. Un volcán empezó a eructar debajo de un océano aún no descubierto y explotó en llantos de lava al primer abrazo tierno. Me encontró así, sin saber que apresaba una expresión dentro de melancolías que hallaron salida en su sal, agua y sal, volcán y lava, abrazo y química. Quantas cosas hay in un beso? Do yes, and the... Uh, excuse me? Do you have one more to read? One, one more, yes. yes. This last one is from a book I'm trying to build up called Odin, his north. And it's about experiences, uh, feelings in Denmark. Humanidad aquí. Retrato de una catástrofe es mi efímera vida aquí, que se esfuma líquida por las alcantarillas de esta ciudad pequeña e inundable por la sola idea de la multiculturalidad. Retrato en hierro y plomo es mi psicología, afectada por los lamentos de gente alcohólica, deliciosa e irresponsable, que canta canciones épicas para llevar la fría noche blanca. Mi vida tiene su asidero al final de las cloacas, donde viven y perecen las ratas coexistentes con cucarachas indestructibles, que sobrevivirán incluso la guerra nuclear mientras nosotros no soportamos ni la tristeza. Es pues este momento extraño, un instante total en slow motion, donde es tan fácil dibujar un frágil daguerrotipo dinámico y fluido, que se va por las alcantarillas de esta ciudad mínima y pretenciosamente monocultural. Thank you, and it was very good to talk to you and listen to you.